I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and welcome to a recap of the December 2021, January 2022 Chemnitz Dining Long live stream. Or at least we're at an intermission because one of the colorways is done and the other needs a second level. But I wanted to show the yarn here uh, and yeah, I'm planning on filming the next bit anyway. For this Chemnitz Dining Long, we were inspired by this fun image of these brightly colored lights against a dark sky. And I thought of a lot of different ways that I wanted to play around with this. But ultimately, using some stock solutions that I already had in my stash, I mixed a golden yellow. The pink was just pink orchid, but I mixed the golden yellow of this lime green, a bluish purple, and a deeper blue blue. Is that all five? I think that's all five colors. And then using just a little pipette, I added drops of these colors that were still mixed at a 1% strength. So a total of one gram of dye dissolved in 100 milliliters of water. And doing so created this speckly colorway. And this is the base that I'm debating. I'm always debating. I am going to add speckles onto some of this. And what I'm considering is leaving one of them as they are, on one of them doing light black speckles, and then on the third doing heavier black speckles. Or I'm gonna do speckles on all of them. But it was always my plan here to do sort of a two-step process for this colorway. The second colorway, which is done, and it's awesome, I went about doing in a very different kind of way. For this colorway, I started with the white yarn and then added on a bunch of zip ties to add resist to the yarn, somewhat randomly placed. And then I added on black. I think I used a total of about two grams of Derma True Black on this 300 grams of yarn. And so I could have gone darker, but it works. It's still, it's not a pure black, it's more charcoal gray, a little bit glazed in some areas. But then I removed the resists and in the remaining white patches, I dotted on the same colors. And this effect is so fun. And when knit up, you will have a primarily dark yarn with then pops of bright and white sort of spread out through it, hopefully a bit randomly. There is gonna be some repeating nature to it based on where the resists are placed. But each resist in some parts of the skein, it's maybe a little wider and other, it's a little shorter. So it's not gonna be like a perfect planned pooling thing. And I intentionally tried to do these little pops of color randomly. So that way you would get some like maybe almost twinkly feeling. I love how this turned out so much. Originally, I thought that I would do one of these skeins, then add the resist, and then over dye it in black. But I'm so happy I did it the opposite way. In some areas, I intentionally added drops of color onto the dark, but this allowed me to focus the color in the areas where we would see them. And so I had that level of control and that was awesome. And this technique is something that I want to repeat for a planned video so, so badly because I think it is awesome. And I am very, very excited to play around with this more going forward. But anyway, now I need to go pre-soak this yarn again so we can dye the next round. I really liked the way that this colorway came out before adding the black. So I decided to try to make this a set and I'm gonna do one version with some light or maybe still heavy, but lighter black speckles all over the yarn, and another skein with super heavy black speckles all over the yarn. I re-pre-soaked this yarn in some water with a big splash of vinegar, and then I took one teaspoon of citric acid crystals and added some true black acid dye from Dharma to this. And of course, while I'm dealing with dry dye powder, I'm wearing my rubber respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves. I stirred this dye powder in with those dry crystals to dilute it a bit and help me get a little bit more defined speckles. And then I decided to start with the heavier speckled colorway. 
And I started with the heavier speckled colorway for two reasons. One, so that way I could get a feel of how heavy I wanted to go and therefore understand how lighter I might want to go on the second skein. But also, this way I could get the first skein in the steamer basket first, giving some time for that dye to start setting on the yarn before I finish the second skein and then add that one. This way I could check with like a paper towel or something first to try to avoid color transfer from the heavy speckled yarn to the lighter speckled yarn. And once everything was in the steamer basket, I steam set the yarn for 30 minutes. I did not have a yarn mop on hand to wipe the dye off the counter, so I wiped it up with some paper towels, trying to get this protected work surface that has a shower curtain on it as clean as possible before starting the lighter speckled yarn. Now, I think I have a little bit too much water when I squeeze out the skeins. I should have taken a little more out because the speckles we were getting, or maybe it was just the amount of dye, things were spreading more, a little more splotch, which is fine. It's just not sharp, sharp, sharp speckles, like sometimes I can see from doing a countertop based technique. To do the lighter speckles, I added another teaspoon of citric acid powder to the black dye that I had used previously. This would dilute it a little further, helping me add less and spread out some of these speckles a little bit more. Even if I think there's still too much liquid in the yarn and things are spreading out more than originally I had envisioned, I think that it'll work well with our color inspiration. I went and double checked the yarn in the steamer basket and by the time I finished the lightly skeined, speckling on the lightly skeined yarn, the, the dye had not yet completely set in the basket. So I grabbed a gallon size Ziploc bag to put our lighter speckled yarn into. I did not seal it, but I had this to help protect the yarn from the other skein in the dye pot. And then my plan is to take this bag and rinse it and save it to use for another project. Um, but I didn't want to wait 30 minutes with the yarn on my counter before I could steam it. So this was a great solution. And now we wait until we can see the cooled yarn and wash it. And here is that set that we created where we have, well, we have the speckles of the bright colors, but then lighter black speckles and then heavier black speckles. Unfortunately, I think that I had the yarn a little bit too wet because I've been able to achieve sharp black speckles on yarn before and these aren't as sharp as I've seen in the past. So there's two things I could have done differently. Actually, like 10 things I could have done differently. But okay, here are three off the top of my head. I could have squeezed out more water from the pre-soak. I could have increased the amount of water in the pre-soak to begin with. And then the third thing is I could have waited more time before flipping the yarn. Because if the dye wasn't really wet yet, if it didn't have time to soak into the yarn, then when through flipping it and moving it, that can move it around and sort of blur out some of those speckles a little bit. But we do unquestionably have speckles here. Zooming in closer, you can see them here on our lighter speckled skein. And you see the speckles on the heavier speckled skein as well, but in some respects, they almost start to look like reverse speckles, which is really cool just because it's so heavy. But you can see how they aren't quite as sharp as a lot of times we may see. I think that if I were to go for this kind of version with these colors again, I would do a few things differently. And the one main one is something that I loved from the resist. I think I would do the speckles first on bare yarn and then layer these other colors on top of it. It's not a problem that the black is on top of some of those colored segments, but this would have allowed me to focus adding the color into more of the white patches, which would have just been fun. I really, really like just on their own, these three skeins of yarn together. I think that it's a fun colorway and it's fun yarn and that makes me really happy. I don't think this is the best representation of the photo. And so I don't think there's the most connect between this yarn and the photo, but 
I don't even really care that much because I'm really happy with what I made. And yes, I plan to do some kind of neon yarn with black speckles at some point, uh, which was another idea I had for this one. But I'm really glad I went in the direction that I did with this colorway and with this one that I showed on stream. Both of them ended up being really fun. I love doing different layers of color. And this kind of, oh, I don't know, it's, this resist, it has like a shattered kind of feeling to me, like those bright patches you're breaking through and seeing something that maybe you couldn't have seen. I don't know. Something about it is really intriguing to me and something that I am absolutely going to play around with more as time goes on. Now it's finally time for me to do my favorite part of the Chemnitz Dialogue, and that's to share some of the pictures of yarn that you dyed inspired by the same inspiration photo. I anticipate a lot of variety in the colorways that we see and the techniques that we see here today, because when you have pops of bright against a dark backdrop, there's a lot of different ways you could think about it, and I know I had a lot of different ideas of how I might have approached this. If you'd like to be featured in upcoming Chemnitz Dialogue recaps, just share your yarn or fabric or fiber that you dye inspired by the inspiration photo on Instagram with the hashtag Chemnitz Dialogue, or reply with a photo comment to the inspiration photo on the Chemnitz Facebook page. And I will always link to that uh, in the live stream description so you can easily go and find the photo for submissions. Thanks again to everyone who submitted pictures. Now all that there's left to do is to figure out how I'm going to list these in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. And the only reason why it's a question, and here this is just three skeins of one colorway, that's pretty obvious, but I could keep these three skeins grouped together as a complete set, or I could list them as individual skeins. And honestly, I am still debating that quite a bit. Either way, if you enjoy the yarn that I dye, go and check out the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop for more hand-dyed yarn featured in my videos. I can't guarantee that these colorways are still available in the shop, but there are hundreds of other colorways to choose from, and it's really worth checking out. In every description, you would get the title and the approximate publication date of the video where the yarn was dyed, so you can go back and watch exactly how I created it, and I think that that's unique and fun. You can find links to my shop and everywhere you can find me on social media down in the video description. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you so much for watching.